In this video, we're gonna talk about creating a master plan for all of your rehearsals from the first leading up to a concert. This is something I think a lot of people don't think about enough, but it, uh, which is why a lot of concerts feel like they're not quite prepared uh, as well as you might want to. But I think it's something that we can lay out there at the very beginning and it makes your life much easier if you can stick to this schedule. There are basically three kinds of rehearsals and I'm gonna say them uh, in an order that might surprise you. I think starting with the fact that there are some final rehearsals. There's a final dress rehearsal and there's some rehearsals uh, leading up to that where we really are gonna try mostly to be running through the music. Then there are note learning rehearsals where things are being introduced. And then hopefully in the middle somewhere are polishing rehearsals where we're trying to create some more subtle ideas uh, with what we're doing with the music. We're gonna talk about a way to plan out a master plan that'll get you to the concert feeling like the whole thing is equally well prepared. We're gonna start imagining we have 12 rehearsals. And as I said before, what I do is start from the bottom. If this is a final dress, and if we're lucky, we have another rehearsal right before that that's also the whole thing. And I try to allow the, these two previous rehearsals to be, uh, to have each a half of the concert. So we'll say first half and second half here. So we're seeing through the large chunks of the program uh, at each of these final rehearsals and nobody has the feeling that it's been a month since they've seen a certain page. We're looking at large chunks toward the end. Now I look up here at the top. Uh, let's imagine we have six pieces of music we're going to sing. C, D, E, F. Okay, six pieces, each with a letter. If I'm going to start with A, my rule is I do it at least three times in a row. If it's very difficult, I might do it more. But as soon as I put A there for the first rehearsal, I know it's going to be at rehearsals two and three also. And let's say that I can add B also into the time I have for those rehearsals. Again, three in a row. By the time I get to the second rehearsal, hopefully I won't have to take quite as much time with A and B, so I'll have time for C. As soon as I put it in there, I'm gonna make sure I do it three times in a row. And then at some point we get to D, E, and F. Let's say we've added D and E in here. Three in a row. And maybe F in here. So we have several, uh, three in a row for F. We've got three in a row for C, D, and E. Now it's probably time to bring back some of the earlier material. So here we have maybe a combination of something that we've done before. Now it's to a polishing stage, reviewing and polishing. And hopefully by this time, we're not really introducing anymore. All the notes are relatively in place. And that means we have a couple rehearsals in the middle and it's usually only a couple where we can improvise. And I can say TBA to be announced, whatever seems to need the most work once everything's been introduced. Now there are a couple of really important advantages to this. Probably the biggest one is that if you write this out and think it through and duplicate it and convey it to the choir at the very first rehearsal, it says one huge thing. It says that you have a plan, that you're not just making it up. Another advantage is some real enthusiastic people might actually prepare for each rehearsal so they'll know exactly what to prepare. That's, uh, you can train choirs to do that, but it's not a universal by any means. But what is universal is that if you give them a plan at the beginning, it says you are somebody who plans out uh, a battle plan and they know that they're gonna get there and they know that you're not just making it up as you go along.